This is going to be a short video tutorial to show you how to use the Kodi Game Lab from Microsoft. Start by double clicking on the icon on your desktop and launching it. In this tutorial we're just going to show you how to set up a basic game world and how to do a few things in it. Once it loads up I want you to select New World. Um, you can load a world you've created previously or resume the last one you were doing but in this case we want to do New World. And when you do that, it gives you a blank world that you can start with. Now, just to go through the icons, the house gives you the menu. You can hit escape to get out of that. Play actually plays the world, but again, you can hit escape to get out of that. The hand is how you move the world, okay? So if you use the left button, it drags the ground. Did you see that? I'm dragging it left, it goes left, right. It actually drags the ground. Okay, and when we get a bigger world, you'll see how useful that is. The middle scroll button zooms in and out, as you can see, and the right button rotates, okay, so left button drags the ground, middle button zooms in and out, and right button rotates the camera basically so you can see things better, and from different angles. Then there's a coding, now I'm going to come back to that and I'm going to come back to the path tool. The one I'm going to go to first is the ground brush. If we click on that, we've got two options here. We've got selection of different types of brushes, which is different, basically different sizes and styles, as you can see with a click on them. I'm going to stick with the square one for the now, though. If I click on this one here, it's different colours. I can use the middle scroll button to go through them, but that is different, basically different types of ground. So see, I'll take that one. It's slightly different ground to what I had. I'll zoom out a bit and we'll make a big kind of grassy bit. Try not to leave gaps because if you leave gaps your people can't go through the gaps. Okay, so I'm just going to make a kind of big... Now, maybe I want to do some kind of road at the middle. Let's see what would make a decent road. That to me looks like something we can make a road from. And I'll put a kind of winding road going through our territory there. I've maybe gone a bit far, eh? You can delete with the right button, okay? So if I want to delete that, can I square that off? Right button deletes. Okay. Now obviously that isn't great, but it's this one to create hills and valleys. If I click on that, again I can choose a type. There's some different shapes to choose from. Let's try the soft round brush and we'll create a kind of hill here or pyramid or whatever you want to call it. And we'll do another one over there. And it's just the left button to make them kind of grow. That's the normal kind of square one here that I'm going to cover in water. Right, so I'm going to kind of raise this bit here. See that around the edge? It's a left button to raise, now the right button goes down. Do you see that? Left button to raise, right goes down. Okay, now I'm going to try water now, which is this last one here. And again, the water has different types of water. You could do lava if you want. Let's do lava, I don't usually do that. And then we click in there, and there you go, you've got lava. Now, if you click again with the left button, it rises. And you see if I do it too far, it spreads out. So the left button makes it come higher, and right goes down. And now we've got a kind of lava filled thing there. Okay, now the other tools you've got is that one there to make ground smooth. So if I want to make this less kind of hilly there, more smooth edge, I can do that, you see. And again, it's just a case of playing with the right and left button. See, a combination of right kind of pushes it down, right up. But both of them kind of smooth it out. And with enough effort, I can make, you know, this one. Right. See that it makes kind of that. Now you could use that, I suppose, for like skyscrapers or something or whatever. It's a bit like Minecraft, I don't know. And there's your world settings as well. Now there are some world settings that you'll play with. The camera mode is one of them where you, if a certain game you want to have a fixed camera that doesn't move with your coder, that's where you would do that. There's a few other things there. The wave height and strength, if you've got water and the breeze and stuff, is all to do with like wind and wave power. If you set them, they can, if you have water in the levels, they'll automatically move. Uh, and it'll have waves and everything, you know. So, 
Right. Let's click on code and we'll put them down on this road here. So once you click code, you've got to click on the world and then select your character. So we will let's start with code. But magical powers. But you can change this out there. You see that? Drag that down if you want them on the ground. Or maybe that's not quite so high up off it. You see, you can put them right down there if you want them. Let's try and put over them. And don't click on them. This is where I get messed up. And use the arrow keys on the keyboard and move on to the colour you want. So we're going to make a blue in here. So there we've got a blue code. Okay. Now I'd like to add something else into this world. What I'm going to add in is Coda likes apples. So let's click there and let's add an apple. Coda making more you can copy and paste like in most things. Here. Now I'm going to cover over that one and change some to green. So we're going to have some green apples. And again, click on Cody, right click on him, go to copy and we'll paste a few green ones in. Cody, let's click near these and let's put a tree in. Right, and again, you can change everything about the tree. You can change the size by right clicking on it. Right. You can change... I rotate it. Okay. So there we've got a rather large tree. Start the programming element. I'm going to right click on him and go to program and we're going to say when Kodu sees an apple Eat it. Okay, so that's the basic kind of coding language for programming in Coda. You can do things like that. So when he sees an apple, he eats it. Now, I made a mistake there because he, that will let him eat it, but only if he gets onto it. If I play that, watch what happens. Nothing. So let's program him again. I'm putting the bit that I forgot. And we're going to say when he sees the apple, instead of delete, I'm going to hit delete the keyboard. And I'm going to say instead of Eating that, I'm going to say when he sees an apple, do move towards. Okay, and that moves him towards the apple. So let's try that. And there we go. He's moving towards them. Okay. Now, it's play, by the way, if I haven't said play, play is a level, okay? Back to Kodu, right click on him, go to program. We're going to say now, when they see apples, we're going to eat it. Now, you don't actually have to say when you see the apple again. Okay, what we're going to say this time is we're going to say when he bumps object apple do eat it. Okay, so when he sees the apple he moves towards it, when he bumps an apple he eats it. And if you're wondering what happened, let's show you. Here comes Koda. And he eats the apples. Red apples. Okay, so let's add when he when he bumps apple plus color red, eat it. Okay, and if we try that now. He should only eat the red apples. Interesting what will happen here actually when he goes to the green ones. He might get stuck over at the green ones. To be honest. Yeah, so I reckon he's going to get stuck here. Yeah. What to fix that? What we could say is, and these are all problem-solving things that you could get the kids to do. We could also say when he sees a red apple. Okay, so when he sees a red apple, move towards it. When he bumps a red apple, eat it. And there we have him programmed. What we could also do is when he bumps a red apple, and then instead of saying bump apple red again, we can move this in. And when you move it in, it attaches it to this, and you don't need to do another when. So it's a bit like doing an if and then closing a few lines against that if with your squiggly back if you're doing it in C sharp. If we click and do here, what we can say is game score five points. 
Now, because I, I'm going to plan later on to do different coders with different colours, I'm going to also add in there this colour score, and I'm going to say red. So we said, when he bumps the apple red, eat it, and basically score points, five points red. And if you play that now, you see the red score up the top right there. It's going to get lots of points now as he eats it. And he's ignoring the green apples as you can see as well and he's going off and hunting all these and he's getting points. Now you might think that's quite a boring game. Well, let's, let's click and code it and let's right click on this code it and copy and paste him and give him some competition. Okay now, let's hover over them and change the colours. So let's make a red one. Let's make a green one. Let's make pink one as well, there we go. And now we've got four. Now if you haven't thought it already, Pac-Man, you could definitely make a Pac-Man game in Koda. You could use Koda as a ghost for instance and you could use something else as your guy. So now they're all red, let's make a change to that. Let's right click on the red one and program him. And we'll say that one's red, that's right. Let's program the green one. Is that the green one I was on there? Yeah, I'm on the green one. So let's program green. And we'll change his score to be green. Let's program the blue one and change his score to be blue. And we'll program the pink one. And we'll make him pink as well. So they should all have their own scores now, as you can see at the top right hand corner. And they're doing a battle. And so, so far, everyone apart from Green has got a point. Losing the lead. And there's so many possibilities this. You could have a race and change settings of Koda. And they do have things like speed. So, say we want to make the blue one have an advantage, we'll put the points up a bit. Put everything up, we'll put acceleration, we'll put turning, we'll put everything up with him, and now he's definitely the man to beat. Let's see, heads off in the lead, and the rest are struggling to keep up, as you can see there. Poor pink one's getting on so far. So, you get the idea. Now, you might think that's very good, but you made a bit faster. We'll right click, program him. And instead of saying C red apple move towards it, we're going to delete that out. And what we're going to say is when keyboard plus arrow keys move. And then we're going to play that and now we are in the game. You can zoom in with the middle button to give you a close up view of it. I've let them get a head start so I better get in here. I haven't done very well, but I'm going to catch up now since I've got the superior speed. Missed that one. Uh, the pink ones. Uh, I'm not happy with that. I'm going to get her. So that's the next thing we're going to do. So let's program our code first. Let's program him. And we'll say when keyboard plus. Uh, miscellaneous, and we'll do space, do, shoot, missile, direction, forward. You tend to have to put shoot missile direction because if you don't it tends to be the missiles home in and it's hard for anyone to get out of the way so I think you're best to put forward and then you get this effect. I can uh, shoot missiles and basically I can destroy the other coders and the tree <laughs> right, and now I've got the plane full to myself now that isn't fair so we need to make them shoot as well but we'll do that in a minute one thing you want to do though is if you click and code and right click and things like trees you can change the settings of the trees and you can make them immobile and invulnerable right, so they cannot be destroyed same with that other tree that's made. Immobile. Which means it can't be moved. And invulnerable. 
Right, so we can't kill the tree. The other thing we can do is we can program the other coders right, to have a bit more, take more than one hit. So if we right click on them, change settings, and we're going to change all the coders to have a max hit of, say, 200, which means we should take four hits. And we're going to click and show hit points. We're going to, right, and let's play that. I shoot him now, you see he's taking a hit and his, count, his power's gone down, but he isn't dead. I hit that tree. Okay, now you can you can also program the coders, right? So I'm only going to program one of them, let's program the red one. So, we'll say when he sees coder do turn toward and then we'll move this in and we'll say, and that means when he sees them as well, we'll say do shoot missile direction forward. Okay, so when the other code is see another code, they turn towards them and they shoot missile forward. You could also tell them to move towards them. I'm saying sh turn rather than move. Let's try that. Alright, so you see he's trying to shoot at the other ones as well as going after the apples. Go to page 2. And in page 2 you could have different code altogether so he doesn't look for apples anymore. He starts just shoot. And before I do anything else I'm going to go to the house because and I'm going to save because I don't want to lose this. Save. You should do that a lot more regular than I just did. Right, you could tell them all to. Since you've got the speed advantage, you could tell them all to gang up in you. So when he sees colour blue, turn towards. And now uh, they're all going to go after you. Run for my life here. 